Elden Ringo. Alrighty, so welcome to Elden Ring. I'm a little late to the party on this one, but rest assured, I have put quite a bit of time into this game already. Um, sitting at uh, about 230 hours at the time of starting this up, I have played through three full playthroughs. And I would have probably done my first blind playthrough through recording had I had the intentions of making videos at the time. But this was just kind of a spur of the moment thing, and I decided to go for it. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and start it up. Uh, just to show you, like I said, I have done this three times now already. Let's go and make a new a new game. Now, I'm not entirely sure what my plan is for this build. Um, I might... Eh, you know, I haven't really done a big, like, bleed-based build. Um, so I might, I might try that. Let's see, bleed scales well off of arcane. Let's go hero. All right, uh, much much like the Borderlands, I'm probably going to skip the character creation aspect just for the sake of saving time. Alrighty, so here we have our character, got her all created and ready to go. And for the keepsakes, uh, I will always recommend the Stone Sword Key because you get two of them which gives you access to a very strong early game item that you may not be able to get other ways. So we will go over that when we get to it. is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the Shah of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Or alone, 
Chieftain of the Badlands. The ever brilliant gold mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. My men are easy. And Sir Gideon of the Earth. The all-knowing. And become the Elden Lord. Alright, so here we are. We got our first adventure started. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna say right off the bat, I am playing offline. That came in extremely loud through my headphones, so I really hope the audio isn't going to be too overbearing. I'm going to have to check that before I get too much further in. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, uh, I am playing offline because I don't want to risk dealing with any kind of hackers or anything which are running rampant as it stands because easy anti-cheat doesn't work. Um, but also in... in in playing offline, I am able to turn easy anti-cheat off entirely, making the game run substantially better. Um, and as I said in the uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland video that should be going up before this, uh, I don't exactly have the greatest computer, so we'll see what happens. Damn, four playthroughs, four playthroughs in, and I still can't do it. Don't worry, Torrin. Fortune is on her side. We found her here after all. One of her kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order.
Alright, so. <clears throat> let's go on and run over here. Oh yeah, that's right. This isn't one of those trees that actually gives you one of the seeds. God damn it. You would think after, you know, this being my fourth playthrough, I would actually know. So, a lot of people miss this, but down here is a legitimate tutorial, which isn't exactly uh, common for From Software games, at least modern From Software. So a lot of people just ran right past this whole thinking it was a death trap. Or they didn't even notice it. Uh, since I have played through the game multiple times already, I've turned all the tutorial messages off. And I'm just kind of going off of uh, my knowledge of the game. Fuck you. Ow. You know, despite having three playthroughs on uh, of this under my belt already, I'm unironically more excited about making videos for this than I am for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Um, because I'm enjoying Tiny Tina's Wonderlands from what I've played of it. I don't know, there's just, this game is just resonating with me, and, you know, over 200 hours, and I still want to go back for more. So, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I do intend to fully play through Tiny Tina's Wonderlands multiple times, probably, as well. But, there's just something about this that's just, it feels right to me. First boss, hardest boss. Let's go, boys. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, now let's uh. Let's actually uh, do this, shall we? Uh, the guard counter system is one of my favorite things they've added in this game. It is, it is just fantastic. It feels so good to hit enemies with it when you get the timing right, because you got to make sure they're not doing a multi-hit string or anything, or else you're gonna get your asshole blown out. And honestly, that's just not fun for anyone. All right, so tutorial zone done. Now, I don't exactly know what I plan to do as a full extent of this playthrough. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do all bosses, because there are some bosses that are optional that just completely murder my frame rate. Um, most notably dragons. Because, yeah, of course, it's always dragons. Why wouldn't it be dragons? Alright, so the stone sword keys that I started with, we're going to use those right here. And down here is a pool of poison. Now, you can get through this without being poisoned, but depending on your level, or depending on what your class you start with, you may not be able to make it, which at that point, it's going to suck. Uh, I also found in my time trying it, that jumping off while faster than going down the ladder, the landing does make you take longer and therefore you have a higher chance of being poisoned. Um, so I just, I just go down the ladder, we, we do it that way. Oh yeah, okay, I didn't get the timing wrong. Realistically, I should have moved as it went past me, probably. Has been a while, in my defense, you know. 
Okay. So, these enemies are fairly durable because I don't think they intend for you to come here for quite some time after you start. Uh, I feel like they definitely expect you to come back. But you know what? That ain't me. That ain't me, Chief. Alright, I got an item that I want to get. Uh, crap, did I already miss it? Yeah, I already... Oh, crap. Yeah, the fall is over this way. Oh boy, it's coming. Okay, so. Uh, here is the scariest part of this, because these guys are durable. They hit hard, they do bleed, and it's... It sucks. And you can't exactly just consistently run past them because there is a fire trap not too far after this. And they will follow you and completely destroy you. Because if you get the timing on the fire trap wrong, you're going to be stuck between them and an instant kill trap. Which, speaking of, I believe it's right here. Ah, okay, why is it not going off? There you are. Now, these fire traps aren't always instant kill, but when you are as weak as I am currently, it will one-shot me. But, it can also work in your favor like that. Now, the thing about coming down here so early is you gotta be prepared to lose every soul that you bring into it. Because, I mean, like I said, you're, you are coming here a lot earlier than the devs intended you to, I feel. Um, so there's a very high chance you're going to die. And then probably die again on your run back to the souls. And that's just a loss you gotta, you, you, you gotta be prepared for, honestly. So, right here is the item. Gotcha, bitch. And that's what I was worried about. Son of a bitch. Got the item. That's all that matters. Alright, 858 souls. That's nothing that I can't get back. It's it's really not a problem if I don't get that. Uh, realistically, I probably should wait to run the tutorial area until after getting that, but... Eh, semantics. Anyway, that is good item to get early because it is essentially the ring of favor and protection from the previous Souls games. And you get that from the beginning, and it is fantastic to have. And that will now be staying on for the rest of the playthrough, until I get higher versions. Alright, so as you can see, my frame rate is starting to chug a little bit. Um, it's just the unfortunate nature of having not a very good computer. Mixing that with a pretty, uh, well, not well performance. Uh, son of a bitch. That's just what you get when you have a computer that's not overly good with a game that's not very well optimized. There we go. That's what I was trying to say before I had a complete and utter brain fart. Oh yes. Tarnish, shall we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an in that you are fated. It seems. Luckily for you, however, me. Varag. Take, are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you, tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace. A path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm. Indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answer. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow. 
even if it leads you to your grave. See, now this motherfucker out here just running his mouth saying I ain't got no bitches, but he is lucky I don't just swing on everyone that says that. Alright, so you see this big scary dude right here. A lot of people bash their head against this fight for so long because they come here too early. But I'm going to show you guys a real easy way to kill him. That involves coming back later. Because if you try to fight him right now, you're probably an idiot. You can do it. It's just going to take forever. It's not worth it. I'm just going to say it right now. Alright, so let's go and get our first smithing stone. Because that's just great. And let's talk to the Grinch. You're tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throne. The line of purchases from something. I am Kai. Purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people. Selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished just like yourself, who keeps things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. You know, if you can spare the rooms, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle. And I admit, I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. You know, if you should buy yourself a crafting kit. Okay, that's just going to have crafting kit again. So I'm going to tell you right now. Crafting kit is useful, but this dude is just shooting it right out his ass, saying that it's essential for survival. I did almost my entire first playthrough without crafting a single thing. And even then, my did craft stuff, it was just like... A couple of throwing knives here and there, just for the sake of it. Um, now, a lot of this game, uh, at least early game, is going to just be, for, for me at least. How in the... You know what, you deserve to survive. Uh, anyway, at least for me... Uh, a lot of the early game is going to be me running to get the map fragments. Um, so I'm probably going to cut out a lot of just the mindless running to get to said to said map fragments. Um, just because it's not exactly an interesting adventure. Uh, I'll probably leave in anything that might happen that is interesting along the way but just in general it's probably going to be a lot of dead time a lot of dead air nothing going on really so yeah that's just how it's probably gonna go just for the sake of everyone's sanity uh, i probably won't cut out getting to this first map fragment because it's right up here also, for anyone that doesn't know, if you look at your map, this little thing right here, that's where the map fragment is. Uh, each area has one of those. Uh, now, the grayed out map here, it's not exactly always easy to tell how to get to it. Um, especially uh, in one particular zone later in that I can think of. But yeah, it is always, mar it is always marked on the gray map where the map fragment is. And that's just some information that I thought was good to know that I don't think a lot of people, at least from what I've seen, a lot of people didn't notice. Um, here I go trying to do Borderlands Brain. Thought I could mantle up that. Now, I don't really know what all I'm going for this playthrough other than Arcane and Bleed. Uh, not entirely sure if I'm going to go Strength based or if I'm going to go and do uh, Dexterity. I don't know if I'm going to use other sources of magic such as Faith or Intelligence or anything like that. I'll just have to see how it goes.
greeting, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. Offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid. I feel like there's an innuendo there. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. She out here telling me I got no bitches either. I can play the role. Everybody's so rude in this world, man. Turn to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, I bequeath to you this ring. Most important item in the entire game, in my opinion. Use it. To traverse, it will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. All right. Now that we have met her for the first time, we have access to leveling up, which is fantastic. But as you can see, I don't actually have enough to level up at the moment. So we'll have to just tell her not for now. Um, here is a very very good thing in my opinion to avoid you cluttering up your your quick bar with the steed whistle and all that stuff just just plop it on here and it's uh simple as that really so it's really useful to do in my opinion to to put it there Alright, so I believe this is the, yeah, the great sword, okay. The flail is other places. I think the flail might be kind of useful to have for a while. Then again, that's dex based, and I didn't choose a dex starting class, so I don't know. I'll have to figure something out as I go. Maybe I'll look at the morning star or something. Um... Yeah, the flail's over here, I believe. Ooh, spooky man hiding in the grass. Well, that was mighty unfortunate. Uh, I do want to apologize for uh, anyone that's noticing my sharp inhales. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a tick that I have. Um, it's not sickness or anything. I've just I've had it for years now, and I've tried to manually force it to stop, and I can never actually do it. Um, if I do it when there's a bunch of downtime, I'll try to edit it out because I know it's probably going to get annoying for anyone that watches. But, it's not really something I can help. Alright, so anyway, we have our first map fragment now. And, now that we have our first map fragment, I feel we can actually explore a bit. Um, now anyone that is unaware, up here is the first major dungeon of the game. So the goal, for me, is going to be explore everything in this area, within reason, I think. Uh, before I go and do that. And as, as you can see, I'm kind of averaging around 45, 50 frames right now. And, um, you know, that, that's partially because my computer is not very good. But on the other hand, it's also because this game has just notoriously been a bad port. Um, it hasn't really got much in terms of optimization since its launch. 
And it's kind of unfortunate, really, because if you play with anti-cheat still enabled, it, it can really ruin the game's performance, making it just not very fun. And I, I've, I've grown up playing games with poor frame rates. I've always been behind on computer parts and all that. So I've gotten kind of used to it to an extent. Um, like I remember back when I was playing Smite, if anyone remembers what that is, uh, third person MOBA. And uh, I would play that on the lowest settings. God damn it, there goes all my souls. I wasn't paying attention because I was talking. But anyway, I would, I would play that on the lowest settings and still only be able to get like 15 frames a second. And ooh, buddy, that was, that was spicy. You know, uh, going, going from Tiny Tina's Wonderlands to this is a very interesting jump for me, in my opinion, as someone that's just going into the recording and uh, making the videos. Uh, because this has next to no dialogue to interrupt you. Meanwhile, Tiny Tina's is constantly talking. So, it's like, in Tiny Tina's, I'm always afraid that I'm going to get cut off every time I speak. But in this, I feel like I have to constantly talk because there's no NPC dialogue, pretty much. And it's just, it's a very interesting duality. Try to not die here again, make myself look even worse than I know I am. Uh, after this recording session, I may drop my settings down a little bit just to try to keep a more stable frame rate. Because um, I don't know about anyone else, but I definitely find a stable frame rate more important than graphics. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll play a game on the lowest settings possible if it means getting to 60 frames consistently. But that's not always an option, depending on, you know, if I'm behind or how far behind on hardware I am, how new the game is and all that, how well optimized that game is. So it really all depends. And right there was one of those multi-hit combos that I was talking about earlier, and I went to guard counter it too early. You know, this is my first time actually playing Elden Ring with headphones. This is an interesting experience. Uh, I can hear so many things that I- God damn it. I can hear so many things that I couldn't really hear or notice before. Alright, new plan. We're just gonna hop on the horse, we're gonna drive by, we're gonna hit anyone that comes in our way, and we're gonna get our side. We're gonna get our money back. Well, that didn't go well. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. And I... Oh, man. I've had a rough day. I'm just gonna use that as my excuse. So, we got our money back, we got, uh, got our horse, now we can start our adventure proper. With the murder of that soldier. And here we have our first little cave to explore. We gonna play Cave Explorer today, boys. Alright, so people sleep on the Vigor stat. It's very important in this game. Uh, especially later in when enemies start doing just absurd numbers. Yeah, 
I was really hoping to go out and get a better microphone before today. Uh, or not necessarily before today, but before I actually started recording things. And I went out and I got myself a $50 headset that I was reading reviews for saying it had pretty good, pretty good microphone quality. And it literally had the exact same microphone as this $5 headset that I'm currently using. Like, who, who, who designed that? Because that, that was not good at all. Alright, anyway, here we have our second boss of the game, not counting the tutorial that's pretty much guaranteed to kill you. Beastman of Faramazula. Funny enough about these guys is they can be backstabbed. And once you backstab them, you do a charged R2, then to loads of damage. And there's not really a whole lot that they can do to avoid that. Um, you can also do a lot of jumping R2s to potentially stun them like that. And uh, realistically, these are just a very easily bullied boss fight when you're not complete dog ass like I am. Uh, so pretty pretty simple and straightforward. Go ahead and sit here and get some level ups. Or a level up. Oh no, I guess it is two. Uh yeah. Let's just go ahead and keep pumping vigor until twenty. Alright, so on our way for more adventures. Where to go first though? That is the important question. Well, let's take a look at our map. What do we see here? Uh, well, I know there's some stuff down here on the beach that we can go take a look at, so let's go over there. Alright, so here we have this little thing. Uh, this is actually a beetle, for anyone that doesn't know that. And these beetles give you Ashes of War, which are uh, essentially weapon arts from Dark Souls 3, but you get to customize them in this instead of them being set in stone on your weapon. And them some birds. What do you need? I don't want any trouble. Alright, so here this guy actually sells the uh, the armor's cookbook that lets you create uh, antidotes, which is very useful. Uh, not as important as some of the other ones, like the Scarlet Rod antidote, but eh, we'll get to that later when we need to. And let's go ahead and add another one to the uh, did not beat the game. It is a bell of calling forth spirits, summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall now, it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Alright, so anyway, yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and rack up another one of the things that I didn't beat the game with. Uh, you know, let's just, let's just look at it. I didn't start as Wretch for one, so I didn't beat the game there. I used a weapon, didn't beat the game. I used a shield, didn't beat the game. I used armor, didn't beat the game. I didn't start at level one, so I technically leveled up, I guess, so I didn't beat the game. Uh, I've used healing items, so I didn't beat the game. I sat at a side of grace multiple times now. I didn't beat the game. While I haven't done it yet, I do intend to use spirit summoning just because there are some bosses that I just really dislike. So I want to make them as free as possible. So I'm probably going to summon and therefore I didn't beat the game. You. You drop the spike plug. Give me it. Aw, oh, you bastard bitch. Alright, so here we have a summon sign that we could use. I'm not gonna do it for this fight. Um, the thing about this fight here is uh, this is one of the few early game boss fights where you can actually get a lot of damage off on the boss before it even actually starts.
as I said, a lot of early balls for my damage. Uh, huh, that's interesting. The, the second one usually doesn't aggro when I do that, though. So, this may not go as smooth as I had hoped. But, eh, if I die, I die. Oh, well. I'm not here for a flawless run, as I've already died multiple times. Eh, it happens. Savage. Oh yeah, I'm sure as shit gonna die. Jumping R2 is probably the strongest tool in this entire game. Uh, outside of uh, some spells and whatnot. It is... It's, it's just absurd how strong it is, honestly. And now, we kill all these monkeys because... Nah, I'm not gonna let these little dudes be all like... Ooh, and then start cowering once the leader is gone. Nah, no, you ain't getting away for free like that. That ain't how this is gonna work. Your life is forfeit the moment you swung on me. Now, I do think after I get to the next side of grace, I am probably going to have to uh, call it for the recording. Uh, my voice is starting to crack and whatnot. I, I'm not used to talking this much in such a small amount of time. Um, because I, I really don't talk a whole lot, uh, normally, at least not for extended periods of time. And even at work, I, I work, I, I work very much alone for the most part, with very little interaction with other people. So, you know, I apologize about my voice starting to go a little bit. But that is another thing, or another reason why I wanted to, uh to start making YouTube videos is to work on my speaking. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have the strongest speech. Uh, I do have a bit of a speech impediment that I'm trying to work through, uh, as you can probably have guessed by how much I've stumbled and slurred over words. Um, and I'm hoping that through this I can try to make that a little bit, just, just a little bit better. Uh, I will say that before I go, right here is something I'm probably going to be interested in for this playthrough. We have the Dragon Altar, which gives Dragon Spells, which scale off of Faith and Arcane. So probably going to have to look into those a little bit this playthrough. <clears throat> but yeah, that's uh, probably where I'm going to call it for this one. Uh, I don't know how much this footage is going to be usable, but we'll see when we get there through editing. Uh, but before I go, I do want to say, um, for anybody that has stumbled across this video and watched to the end, I very much appreciate that. Um, I'm not here to, to make money off of YouTube or to make a job out of it. I'm here to make content that I hope can bring people joy, even if it's only one person that, 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 that even if it's only one person that shows up, um, my phone alarm. That's 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 real professional, isn't it, huh? I'm gonna go and leave this in. Probably. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I I'm, I'm not here to make money off of this or anything like that. I'm here to try to bring people joy and maybe you know bring someone a bit of happiness or maybe get their mind off of something that could potentially be hurting them, even if it's just for a little bit. So, you know, with that being said, uh, yeah, I will be calling it for now, and I will hopefully see anyone that showed up here in the next video.